We're going to do this um, it's sort of a little quicker than we normally would, but if you could have this working, your diagram, diagrams, there, we're going to pick up exactly where we left off. Hopefully, this rings a bell. This is a um, better and neater constructed version of what you saw yesterday on the board. And uh, just to review, we were looking at this 3D situation. We had the, uh, it was a tower, wasn't it? Tower? You had a tower, these three observers, and the three angles of elevation. Now, what we did was we said, okay, I don't know any lengths here. I don't know any lengths, and I'm trying to work out a bearing of some kind here on the ground. And so in order to get from this 3D situation into a two-dimensional situation, uh, we did all of this business. Have a look over on the right-hand side. You can see, I'll just highlight it for you. Um, you can see we worked out AT. That's probably not very clear for you. Let's pick a better color. We picked out... AT, BT, and CT. These are the lengths on the ground. Can you guys see that? Is that all right? Yep. Yeah. So we got all the lengths on the ground using right angle triangle trig because the tower is vertical, so it always creates a right angle with the ground, and then we saw that in all these three triangles. Okay. Now, I believe the last thing we said was this. Down here, we were looking at angle ABT. Do you remember that? It was in that little triangle there. You can actually see it just here. ABT. We're trying to find this angle in here and we use the sine rule but where we left off and a few of you were like mm, I'm getting different calculations here. Um, where we left off was these two angles. Why do I have two not one? What's the reason? Yeah Rassan. It can be the other way around too. It can be the other way around too. Now just real quick because we now have the vocabulary graphs in our brain. Let me just mute this for a quick second. Zoop. Remember when we looked at the graph of sine x, we did it with spaghetti, we did it by hand. This is the shape that we got, right? Now the whole idea is, if you know sine of an angle, and I think it's like 0 0.7, sine of angle A, B, T is about 0 0.7, okay? What we're saying is, see this graph? Do you remember what its, um, its range was? Where was the lowest it could go? Negative 1, and what was the highest it could go? One, very good. What we're saying is, hey, there's some angle somewhere on here, and when you take the sign of that, you get 0 0.7. Now, where's 0 0.7? I would place it very roughly. If that's 0.5, I'll put 0.7 there. That red line right there, that red line represents 0 0.7 on the vertical scale. Now, have a look at the red line, and then have a look at the graph. There's an angle here and an angle here. It's like, hey, there's two options, and the two options are uh, whatever, 44 point, what did I write down? 44.7 or 135.3. And that should actually make sense because this midpoint here, that's 180 degrees, isn't it? Okay, so this is why we have two solutions. And, and that's where you left up. Say, say it again. Um, why not and? Like, why not both of them, just one of them? Oh, what, wait, hold on. Why? How can I, why am I getting both of them and not just one? Is that what your question is? Why are you just taking one, yeah. Ah, okay. Now, I can just take one if I can use other information in the diagram to help me. Just see if you remember this. When we were having a look at certain triangles, for instance, if I, I'm just going to make up some numbers, they're probably going to be wrong, but I'm just going to run with it anyway. Suppose we had lengths like this, right? And we knew that you got an angle of, oh, let's say that was measured to you. And then you were trying to find this angle, okay? Now, if you went ahead and you did the sine rule, you got two options there, right? You know, whatever angle you get out, it has to be bigger than 23 degrees. Do you agree with that? How, how do I know that it has to be bigger than 23? Three, Your angles always have side. Very good. Bigger angles must match up to or be opposite bigger sides, right? So in this case, I'm like, oh, the sine rule hands me two options, but I can exclude one of them because of other information in the diagram, okay? Now, let's come back to our working here because we're going to try and do this. And this is where we left off, so you may like to jot some of this down, though don't worry about jotting down everything. Have a look over here in the bottom left hand corner. I'm trying to do here what I did over there in that blue triangle. I'm trying to think, oh, can I work out from the sides which angle should be the bigger angle, right? Now, if you go ahead and you pop into your calculator, cot 26 degrees and cot 28 degrees, right? What you find is that cot 26 degrees is bigger than cot 28 degrees. You can go ahead, you can verify it on your calculator. Now, I don't know how tall the tower is, but it's the same 
height on both sides of this inequality. So I can say, oh, this side here, AT, which is opposite the angle I'm interested in, it's longer than this side BT, right? Where I have the angle, let me just go up a little bit. I have the angle opposite that, right? So if I know this side is bigger than this side, then its angle should be bigger than the one over here. But that doesn't help. Can anyone show me? I mean, I've written it down here. Why doesn't it help to know that the side is longer, Matt? Because both 44 and 135 are bigger than 44. Yeah, very good. I'm like, oh, this angle here, I can know for sure, just like in my blue example over there, it should be bigger than 40.19. But they're both bigger than 40.19. So I'm like, this is not enough information. Um, I, I can't sort of exclude one of the options just from this alone. Okay, so this is what I did and like I said, don't freak out about writing this down because there's a lot there and I'll just pop it up on canvas for you. Let me talk you through what you're looking at. Since, get this, since inside the triangle I did not have enough information to work out which angle it was. I have to look outside the triangle. Let me say that again because a lot of you will be like, why would you go and do this? Here's the reason why, right? Since this is the triangle here that I was looking inside and I'm like, not enough information. So I have to extend my view and look outside. Here's where I looked. Uh, angle sum of ACT, this guy here. Okay, so this is the big triangle and it's on the ground. Do you remember that? This 40.19, we worked that out earlier. Okay, so using that and there's a right angle, you can work out this guy here, ACT. Do you see that? Are you following the working? I just used the angle sum of a triangle. It's 49.81. So now I know how big this is. Okay. And then I wonder, I have to have a think. I've got these two potential options for ABT. This is the one where I was like, is it acute? Is it obtuse? I don't know yet. So what I did was I thought, what happens if it is acute? Let's just try it and see what happens. If this is the acute angle, then this angle on the other side, it's on a straight line, yeah? What's the relationship between these two angles? They add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so I said, well, if that's what this one's equal to, on the other side, that's the supplement. Okay, but then look at what happens. If this is acute, then this is about 135. I just worked out that this is 49.8. 135, 49.8, this is what they add up to. Right? You can go ahead and you can verify this on your calculator. That's a problem, right? Why is that a problem? It's, 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 more, than 100 it's more than 180 degrees. I'm supposed to be in a triangle here, right? The biggest that all three of these angles can add up to. Um, is 180. But that right? line there. Yeah, this line here? Yeah, it cuts the 90 degrees. <coughs> uh, it cuts what 90 degrees? Okay. Cuts this guy here? <coughs> yeah, so I, you know what? I don't even know how big this angle is. I was just looking at these two. That's what this represents. And I'm like, I'm already over 180. Right? Does this make sense? I'm like, uh-oh, this is bad. I've broken the diagram, okay? So therefore, if thinking about the acute version of the angle, breaks things, right? You're like, no, no, that can't be. That has to be excluded. Does this make sense? I tried out the acute version. It led to an impossible diagram. So therefore, there's only one conclusion I can make. It's not the acute one. It has to be the other one. That shouldn't say 49. I think that should say 44.7. Sorry, let me fix that. The 44.7 is what I tried out, but it didn't work. So I said it can't be 44.7. It has to be the other one, all right? That's the way that I'm going to resolve the ambiguous case. That's quite tricky, it's quite complicated. It's why I'm like, ah, oh, I can't rush over this yesterday. I had to show you a separate time. But once you've got that, it's a matter of then putting all the angles together um, in this little triangle. Have a look at your diagram, right? Remember the bearing of B from the tower? The bearing of B from the tower should be this angle on your diagram, ATB, it's on the ground, okay? So you just use the angle sum of a triangle and this is what you get, okay? Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions on any part of that? Because I did go through that fairly quickly. Any parts that need a bit of clarification? As promised, I'll give you this on Canvas so you don't have to worry about writing it down, but I wanted you to see the flow of my argument, like, Resolving this ambiguous case, that's a lot of work and a lot of thinking. So that's why it takes so much space. In fact, it's about half of my working is just dealing with that guy. Okay.